everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am going over a very thorough, I hope, review and comparison of the flanner skates versus the slate skates. Uh, as you guys know, my go-to skate is the flanner skate, but I recently got sent the slate, so I wanted to try them out, see what I liked, see what I didn't like, and let you guys know an honest review of everything. Now these skates are both from the same company, the parent company of called Flanners, and they recently came out with a more affordable option of the sneaker skates, and they call those slates. I know that this is like a common complaint or comment that I get on all of my TikToks saying that this is way too expensive, how can anyone afford this? And yes, I totally agree, it is expensive, but like good quality stuff costs money, you know? <laughs> there are a couple of main differences and I'll go over all of them, but just a quick summary of what the main differences are is that Slades has its own shoe, whereas Flanders has this customizable option of being able to choose whatever shoe that you want that is compatible with having the holes drilled up to the bottom and having the hardware installed. The plates are actually outsourced. They use Suregrip, which is a very reputable and established skating company to get the plates and the, what's it called, the, the trucks. But Slades, it's its own shoe. Slates is also its own hardware. They created their own plates, they created their own trucks, so they don't need to like spend this extra money to get this third party part. The biggest thing is that both systems are actually intercompatible. So you could buy Slates and then want to upgrade to a custom shoe from the Flanners like customizable um, option and then you don't need to buy a plate. You, your shoe will work with the Slate plate. So that's really awesome. Like you, it gives you some time to try out the skating, learn how to skate um, with a much more affordable option and then switch over once you've like, I don't know, convinced yourself that this purchase is worth it. Let's go over what everything looks like. Here are the Slate shoes. The Slate shoes are a very standard high top shoe. As you can see, they either come in this color, this mixture of like an off-white and gray beige tone thing, or just an all black shoe. And I got it in the size European 40, which is a US women's nine. This is the shoe that will fit the plate that I already have. So when you're thinking about switching between the two systems, you just need to make sure that all the parts are the same size. Let's begin with the price differences. The price difference is a bit big. You can look up more specifics about everything because as far as the flanners go, there's a lot of customizable options that will incur more costs or that will let you pay for like the cheapest possible option. The price range for the flanners goes from like 450-ish dollars to seven, eight hundred dollars depending on what parts you opt for and what shoe you get. If you want to do a shoe that they don't offer already, then you need to buy that shoe and then you need to ship it to them. For example, I got my Nike blazers separately and those blazers cost me about $90 and then I sent those to Flanners. Now shipping was free because this is a, um, like a, what's the word for good tip in English, honey tip, a, this is a, so this is a, or tip that I have, order your shoes from whatever France counterpart website there is, if there is. Like for Nike, I just went on to nike.france or .fr and so the shipping was free. So all I did was pay for the shoes. And then I opted for the Iconic series and added a skate leash to my order. So in total, not including the shoe, everything cost me 379.99 euros. So in total, I'd say I've, I spent about 460, 450 dollars, depending on what the exchange rate was back then. On the other hand, the Slades don't have this option to customize anything. The only thing that you can choose between is the black shoe and the white shoe. So the total cost that's listed on the website is 230 euros, way cheaper than the Flanners. That's about the same price as a beginner skate that you can trust. Okay, so let's talk about quality because the reason why there is this price difference is because there is a difference in quality. Let me just preface this by saying that although there is a difference in quality just on a very baseline level, like just like as a casual skater, I didn't notice any difference. But let's dive into it. Obviously the Flanners product has much higher quality as far as the parts go. So I'll talk about exactly what parts my skates have as far as the Iconic series goes. And I would highly recommend just doing your own research about everything. Honestly, if you're not like a professional skater or you're not, I don't know, doing like 360s every single time you're going cruising, you don't really need the highest quality stuff, you know? 
So this is my Flanners plate. It has no wheels on it. It has no toe stop on it because I switched everything over to my Slade's plates before my trip to Korea. This is the Shergert Rock plate. I've talked about this in my previous skate talk video. But, and then the trucks on it are also sure grip trucks. As far as the plate goes, this is the same plate that- Oh, the sandpaper's falling off. Whoa! <laughs> um, anyways, well, what was I gonna say? By the way, this shoe-shaped part is not the plate. It's the white part that's the plate. This plate is really good. I had it on my park skates before I switched over to Bond. This is what I had on my first pair of um, skate park skates. It is very durable, perfectly fine for me jumping around the bowls and like grinding and everything. If it can handle that, it can handle a cruising session, <laughs> you know? You don't need to worry about quality there. I think that this is also something that I see floating around a lot that because it's not the highest quality, it's just gonna break on you. And that is simply not true. The quality that's really necessary for a non-professional skating for hobby type of skater, like someone who's not jumping from ledge to ledge, grinding on everything that they see and like doing 540s off of, I don't know, like seven stairs while they go for a cruise, you don't really need <laughs> the best of the best, you know? Flanners as a company has already very clearly not guaranteed that these skates will work in a skate park aggressive setting. In fact, they don't recommend that you do that because although the plate will be able to handle it and although the like the latching hardware system is good and very sturdy, you can't be guaranteed that it's going to be able to sustain you jumping like seven stairs um, into a freaking like royal grind. I don't know. <laughs> so basically you shouldn't be doing that stuff anyways with your flanners. Just stick to cruising, just stick to like exploring the city on wheels instead of <laughs> trying to find the best skates that'll last you through all the aggressive stuff. There's another market for that. <laughs> so just go over there and stay safe. Bye. Uh, so let's talk about what I don't like about the slates. Generally, I would say the slates are really good. I'm honestly like, I'm not even being paid to make this, make this video. I did get sent most of my skates other than like the first pair. Um, and so I'm really grateful to them, so I want to make this video. And also I want to make sure that everyone out there knows the clear differences between the two. But yeah, generally the slates are really good. The only complaints that I would have is that, one, the shoes aren't that cute. <laughs> like, I think I can make it work, um, but I just simply have cuter shoes. So I don't really like wearing the, these shoes. I don't really like how the design on the top looks. Like if it weren't high tops, I should be performing in a barber shop quartet or something. <laughs> Maybe it's just me that sees that, but if it were all white, I would like it a lot better. But the two-tone thing, I'm not really vibing with. I'm also not vibing with how large this logo is here. Other than that, the shoe's comfortable. It's just not my style. <laughs> Number two of what I'm not a big fan of. It's kind of, I am a fan, but I'm not a fan. So the Flanner Skate Key looks like this. Um, you can choose the color you get. It's a piece of fabric and then you can put it onto your key ring and then on the back there's a little elasti to hold this and honestly this is poor design as well because it's just it's dirty and this will fall out and and then stab you but then it's kind of a hassle to have to put it back in because <laughs> i'm lazy and i don't want to take the extra step of going and then you know so compared to this this is so much better the slate's key it's compact and it's, it's like the size of a key, so it's, it's not like massive like this. My only complaint is that the hole for this key is on the side. So, so when I put it on my key ring, it like hangs crooked like this. Um, and, and I wish it didn't <laughs> hang crooked like that. Um, I wish that the hole was just straight through the middle like a normal key so that it could line up with all my other stuff, you know, but it doesn't, so, like, this is kind of annoying, but I think those are my only complaints. After skating on both the Slade's plate and the Flyner skates plates throughout my times in Korea, I have literally noticed no difference between the two performance-wise, between the two with, like, comfort, with how sturdy something feels. There is virtually no difference, <laughs> especially because I am not someone who's doing all that aggressive skating. I am simply trying to get from this part of the river to this part of the river and 
not spend time walking between my destination and the station. I just want to freaking skate straight there. As far as what is necessary for a standard skater, like the Slades system is perfect. <laughs> um, in fact, I actually really like the Slades plates more because of how the top right here is plastic and smooth because when you're carrying it around, the sandpaper from the flanners plates kind of catches on my clothing and I don't really like that. It also picks up dirt, whereas this one, if it picks up dirt, it's really easy to just wipe off. Everything about the Slades plates is compatible with whatever you have on your normal skates like your toe stops i know that in my previous video i was struggling to get the toe stop off but the threading the diameter of the stem is the same even though like your the little nut is not the same size as american tools like you just uh, and get it off and then it's fine it's it'll be fine what i really like about the slates concept is that it's extensible <laughs> Like if you can't afford the flanners right now, but you can afford the slates and then later on you can afford dropping like $150 on a shoe, then that's first of all in total still cheaper than if you had just bought flanners from the beginning. But I just like that they are trying to make it more accessible because flanners, the price point was really high <laughs> and it was an impulsive purchase for me. <laughs> but I know that not everyone can just do these impulsive purchases. so. Yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about with the skates. Definitely let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and let me know if, if you want me to show you anything else. I can definitely do like small TikToks as I usually do, <laughs> like showing off the skates. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to, what what is it they say? Like it, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, <laughs> turn on your alarm for new videos. I have. Um, many more videos coming for my Korea trip. Yeah.